Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey around the world, an epic 42,000 piece jigsaw puzzle from Ejika. I've already done the unboxing and about 15 hours worth of work on it. I'll leave the links to those videos in the description below. Go check them out. I want to start by saying thank you so much for all the amazing comments and words of encouragement that you all left in the last video. I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to continue with this with a positive attitude and hopefully things will go better or at least I know what to expect. I did accidentally tap the table oh, and I accidentally touched some pieces and they, how can I explain this? When you try to move pieces instead of them moving, they, you know, they TP upwards. And so just touching it, it's so crumbly, so finicky. So I know I have to be careful. At least I have that already in mind. Two things I wanted to mention. One was, yes, I did pick up right away that the pieces have a direction. I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the last video or not. I'll put up a photo, but basically the pieces appear tall, tall way, lengthwise. How would you even say that? Basically, you turn the piece so that it's longer up and down as opposed to side to side. So it appears taller than it is wider. And that makes it easy because you know that a piece can only go one or two ways, either this way or that way. The other thing people commented on is that this panel, this puzzle has seams. So I did count the border pieces and I found the vertical seam. And yes, it does appear those pieces appear differently. The prong is smaller and more square. They're, they stand out compared to the other pieces in this jigsaw puzzle. I don't know how helpful that is at this point because the image is so busy and the detail, but it could come in helpful during the sky where it's more solid color. At least I know which pieces go down the middle. I haven't been able to find the two horizontal seams that I'm told appear in the panel because I probably don't have enough pieces built yet. So maybe when this panel is done or I'm further along, I might be able to figure out where those horizontal seams are. Again, it's a busy image. I'm not sure how much that's going to help or not. But yeah, so the pieces definitely have a direction and there are seams which could be helpful. So yeah, just a bit of more information about this jigsaw puzzle. I'm looking at it, I'm standing right by the table. I'm so paranoid, I'm gonna knock it. It's not even funny. <laughs> Don't move. The dogs have been amazing. No one's touched it. I'm the only one that's touching it. And oh, luckily it's, it's still in position, but very easily can you make a mess of it. So positive attitude, we're going to enjoy this. We'll learn a few things during the voiceover. That'll be fun. So without further ado, and for the love of puzzles, let's get cracking on another 15 or so hours as we journey around the world. I continued to work in the bottom right hand corner, concentrating mostly on the rock formation. Monument Valley in Arizona of the United States. You can even see the Welcome to Arizona sign there as well. It's a region of the Colorado Plateau characterized by a cluster of sandstone buttes, the largest reaching 1,000 feet or 300 meters above the valley floor. A butte is an isolated hill with steep, often vertical sides and a small, relatively flat top. It's located on the Utah-Arizona state line near the Four Corners area. The valley is a sacred area that lies within the territory of the Navajo Nation Reservation. Monument Valley has been featured in many forms of media since the 1930s. Director John Ford used the location for a number of his westerns. Critic Keith Phipps wrote that it's five square miles or 13 square kilometers, have defined what decades of moviegoers think of when they imagine the American West. In the lower left-hand corner, I worked on the water feature as well as more animals, the skunk and beaver are depicted here. Skunks are mammals known for their ability to spray a liquid with a strong, unpleasant, more like horrific, scent from their anal glands. 
Different species of skunk vary in appearance from black and white to brown, cream, or ginger colored, but all have warning coloration. While related to polecats and other members of the weasel family, skunks have their closest relatives, the old world stink badgers. Beavers are large semi-aquatic rodents of the Northern Hemisphere. There are two extant species, the North American beaver and the Eurasian beaver. Beavers are the second largest living rodents after the capybaras. They have stout bodies with large heads, long chiseled like incisors, brown or gray fur, hand like front feet, webbed back feet, and flat scaly tails. The two species differ in the shape of the skull and tail and fur color. Beavers can be found in a number of freshwater habitats such as rivers, streams, lakes, and ponds. They are herbivores, consuming tree bark, aquatic plants, grasses, and sedges. Beavers build dams and lodges using tree branches, vegetation, rocks, and mud. They chew down trees for building material. Dams impound water and lodges serve as shelters. Their infrastructure creates wetlands used by many other species. And because of their effect on other organisms in the ecosystem, they are considered a keystone species, a species which has a disproportionately large effect on its natural environment relative to its abundance. In human culture, the beaver symbolizes industriousness and is the national animal of Canada. Above all that is depicted Canada's Parliament Hill in Ottawa, Ontario, the capital of the country. It's also just known as The Hill. Its Gothic Revival suite of buildings and their architectural elements of national symbolic importance is the home of the Federal Legislature of Canada. Parliament Hill attracts approximately 3 million visitors each year. Originally the site of a military base in the 18th and early 19th centuries, Development of the area into a governmental precinct began in 1859, following several extensions to the parliament and departmental buildings, and a fire in 1916 that destroyed the cinder block. Parliament Hill took on its present form with the completion of the Peace Tower in 1927. Since 2002, an extensive $3 billion renovation and rehabilitation project has been underway throughout all the precinct's buildings. Work is not expected to be completed until 2028. There are usually five Canadian flags that fly on Parliament Hill, one on the Peace Tower, two on the East Block, and two on the West Block. Each year, approximately 250 flags fly on the Peace Tower and 200 on both the East and West Blocks. The Peace Tower flag is changed every weekday and on days when it is half-mast. The flags on the East and West blocks are changed once a week and on days when they are half-mast. Parliament Hill flags are not changed on statutory holidays and for safety reasons during poor weather conditions such as snowstorms or high winds. Upon being removed from its pole, a flag is dried, folded as per the folding protocols, and stored for distribution. Any Canadian resident can add his or her name to the waiting list for a Canadian flag that has flown on Parliament Hill. The Gateway Arch is a 630 foot tall or 192 meter monument in St. Louis, Missouri of the United States. Clad in stainless steel and built in the form of a weighted cantonary arch, it is the world's tallest arch and Missouri's tallest accessible building. This is the Biosphere, a museum dedicated to the environment in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. It is housed in the former United States Pavilion, constructed for Expo 67, located within the grounds of Parc Jean Drapeau on St. Helens Island. The museum's geodesic dome was designed by Buckminster Fuller, an American architect. On the afternoon of May 20th, 1976, during structural renovations, a fire burned away the building's transparent acrylic bubble, but the hard steel truss structure remained. The site remained closed until 1990. In August 1990, Environment Canada purchased the site for $17.5 million to turn it into an interactive museum 
showcasing and exploring the water ecosystems of the Great Lakes St. Lawrence River regions. The museum was inaugurated in 1995 as a water museum and is a set of enclosed buildings designed by Eric Gauthier inside the original steel skeleton. It offers interactive activities and presents exhibitions about the major environmental issues related to water, climate change, air, eco-technologies, and sustainable development. This rock formation is called Devil's Tower, a butte in the Bear Lodge Ranger District of the Black Hills, northeastern Wyoming of the United States. It rises 1,267 feet, or 386 meters, above the Belle Fouche River, standing 867 feet, or 265 meters, from summit to base. This building is the Transamerica Pyramid, a 48-story modernist skyscraper in San Francisco, California of the United States, and the second tallest building in the San Francisco skyline. Located in the city's financial district, it was the tallest building in San Francisco from its completion in 1972 until 2018 when the newly constructed Salesforce Tower surpassed its height. It was commissioned by Transamerica CEO John R. Beckett with the claim that he wished to allow light in the street below, most likely the reason for its pyramid shape. The building no longer houses the headquarters of the Transamerica Corporation, which moved its U.S. headquarters to Baltimore, Maryland. However, the building is still associated with the company by being depicted on its logo. Designed by American architect William Pereira, the building stands at 853 feet, or 260 meters. On completion in 1972, it was the eighth tallest building in the world. Next, we have one of the buildings from the Philip A. Hart Plaza in downtown Detroit. It's a city plaza along the Detroit River. It's located more or less on the site at which Antoine Lomé de la Moth, Sieur de Cadillac, landed in 1701 when he founded Fort Pontchartrain du Détroit, the settlement that became Detroit in Michigan of the United States. The 14-acre plaza, which is named for the late U.S. Senator Philip Hart, opened in 1975 and has the capacity for about 40,000 people. Traversing this puzzle is the iconic Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco, California in the United States. It's a suspension bridge spanning the Golden Gate, a one mile wide or 1.6 kilometer wide strait connecting the San Francisco Bay to the Pacific Ocean. The bridge also carries pedestrian and bicycle traffic. It was declared one of the wonders of the modern world by the American Society of Civil Engineers. This bridge is one of the most internationally recognized symbols of San Francisco and California. It was originally designed by engineer Joseph Strauss, an American structural engineer, in 1917. At the time of its opening in 1937, 
It was both the longest and tallest suspension bridge in the world. Titles it held until 1964 and 1998, respectively. Its main span is 4,200 feet, or 1,280 meters, and a total height is 746 feet, or 227 meters. The Golden Gate Bridge has always been painted orange vermilion, deemed international orange. Consulting architect Irving Moreau selected the distinctive orange color because it blends well with the span's natural setting as it is a warm color consistent with the warm colors of the land masses, and it's distinct from the cool colors of the sky and the sea. It also provides enhanced visibility for passing ships. The mountain depicted behind this section of the Golden Gate Bridge is Mount Whitney in California. It's the highest mountain in the contiguous United States and the Sierra Nevada range, with an elevation of 14,505 feet, or 4,421 meters. Next, we have the Space Needle, an observation tower in Seattle, Washington of the United States. Considered to be an icon of the city, it has been designated a Seattle landmark. Located in the Lower Queen Anne neighborhood, it was built in the Seattle Center for the 1962 World's Fair, which drew over 2.3 million visitors. The Space Needle was once the tallest structure west of the Mississippi River, standing at 605 feet or 184 meters. The tower is 138 feet or 42 meters wide, weighing 9,550 short tons. And it's built to withstand winds of up to 200 miles per hour or 320 kilometers per hour, as well as earthquakes of up to a magnitude of 9.0. The Space Needle features an observation deck 520 feet or 160 meters above ground, providing views of the downtown Seattle skyline, the Olympic and Cascade Mountains, Mount Rainier, Mount Baker, Elliott Bay, and various islands in Pudgett Sound. Visitors can reach the top of the Space Needle by elevators, which take 41 seconds. On April 19, 1999, the city's Landmarks Preservation Board designated the tower a historic landmark. And then I finish off with the Brooklyn Bridge of New York City and New York of the United States. It's a hybrid cable stayed slash suspension bridge. It opened on May 24, 1883 with a main span of 1,595.5 feet or 486.3 meters and a deck 127 feet or 38.7 meters above main high water. Well, that was another 13 hours and 45 minutes of work. I finished last night and I thought, oh, I won't do another hour and 15 minutes tomorrow. I'll film the outro because it does take a lot of time to do the editing. So I thought that's a good time to stop. So I've done a total of 28 hours and 45 minutes of work on this section of the jigsaw puzzle, the first bag of 6,000 pieces. Eight hours of that was sorting time. I think I've done pretty well. I'm, I'm pleased with that. Now I will say it it's enjoyable. It was enjoyable because I knew what to expect so I was much more careful with the pieces. Trying not to touch the jigsaw puzzle. Trying not to move too much stuff around. Trying not to knock the table. I do feel a bit like I'm walking on eggshells around this jigsaw puzzle but the image is so enjoyable and I love learning everything with the voiceovers. It's so much fun. 
Two things I wanted to comment on were, I had mentioned how some of the imagery I felt looked a little blurry to me, but actually when it came to building it, it wasn't that bad. It's mostly like these two buildings. It just felt like there weren't nice crisp lines around the windows. It was a bit blurry-ish. And I understand it's just the design so that they appear maybe in the background as opposed to the foreground. I did have an issue with a few false fits, but not bad. It's just that the image is very repetitive. And so in that case, I, you might try pieces and think they fit somewhere, but they don't. I quickly though learned to realize, oh, if I can't find a piece next to it, it's probably a false fit. And maybe if I had more room that I could lean over and look better top down, I would notice it better that the piece didn't belong there. It's not such a big deal, but just something to be aware of. And I think that's almost any puzzle that has a very similar cut with a repeating pattern, you gotta be careful for false fits. So I quickly kind of go, hmm, does that piece really go there or should I move it? So it wasn't such a big deal, but something I wanted to mention. The other thing was you would have seen that I used pieces of paper to build some areas and then try to slide them into place. And that worked okay, except when you need to connect multiple sides. So then it's a bit tricky because you're trying to line it up and slide it off. And I did have some difficulties. I mean, yeah, what can you do? My husband actually suggested that maybe I need to pull the table fully out so that I can fully walk around all sides of the table. And then I just have to continuously move the cameras because it was really hard to reach over that other side and try to put those pieces in without having them fall and crumble. Um, I am leaning a lot. I can get over on the sides a bit more. It's not too bad, but it probably might be helpful if I did have the room to walk around all four sides of the panel. So that might be something I do for the next bag. But for now, it's getting there. I mostly have vegetation left, the animal, fur, a lot, some of the darker brown pieces, sky, and two mountains. I also have this pile of miscellaneous pieces. And some of them, I look at them and I go, I should know where you go. You have a distinct pattern, a distinct like image, I should know where you go. And it's so frustrating because I can't figure out where they go. And then when I finally find one from that miscellaneous pile and I fit it, I go, oh yeah, that was so obvious. So I don't have too many of those, but every so often after I finish building like a main area, so when I finished like this building, I went through my miscellaneous pile and I found pieces that belong to it. And maybe it's easier then because I had only a few pieces missing from the building. I would look and go, okay, I'm looking for a piece with this shape and these colors. And I go, oh, look, it's right there in my miscellaneous pile. So that's kind of fun. It breaks it up to go through those pieces every so often and figure out where they go. But I am enjoying it. I'm having fun with the image. I just gotta be careful. And once you have a lot of pieces down and connected, it's not so bad. It's just that initial build of trying to move things around. It's, it's just very crumbly. It's still very crumbly, but the image is lovely. So yeah, a little bit more upbeat, a little bit more positive. I can't wait to see it all finished. That'll be fun. Still worried about flipping it and taping it. I will keep this raw edge here, this last row because then I will move it over and I'll use it as the first row with the top and bottom borders to build the next bag. So that was recommended to me and I think that's a smart thing to do just to help. Maybe I should actually keep two. I wonder if it would stay better connected. Probably not, but anyway. I wasn't frustrated during this build. Maybe because I knew what to expect, I was more careful, I changed some ways, and I love seeing the image developed. It, it's really quite lovely. So I just want to thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao!